Hi, amazing viewers. Welcome to Christianity over Islam with San Shimon. And on today's debate, Jewish scholar asks San Shimon if Jesus is the Messiah. Let's watch. As a, as a Jew, why do I need Christianity? Why do I need the New Testament? Because if you believe the Old Testament prophesied the Messiah, then there is no Judaism without belief in Messiah. In fact, one of the 13 articles of faith by Moses Maimonides is that you must affirm the Messiah. So Christianity says your Messiah came. So if he has come and you reject him, then you're rejecting God. But how do I know Jesus is the Messiah? Well, that's what you have to examine, right? Yeah. So you have to examine the claims of Jesus and his followers, see if they're anchored in the Old Testament, and the interpretation of the Old Testament is correct. But like, from what I understand, it's only sh like shown in Isaiah. It's only in Isaiah? No, it's not. Even the rabbis point to many passages in the Hebrew Scriptures. Rabbis who are not Christians say this is messianic. For example, Daniel 7, 13 and 14, where the prophet Daniel has a vision of the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. You have in the Talmud and Rashi himself saying, this is King Messiah. And that's a passage that Jesus himself quoted in reference to himself. So a lot of the prophecies found in the New Testament where they say this passage is about Messiah. Psalm 2, 7, Daniel 7, 13, 14, Daniel 9. Even the rabbis agree it's Messiah, though they reject Jesus. Okay, so... It's just not Jesus. But yeah, they'll say it's Messiah, but they don't believe it's Jesus. But that's the dilemma for them. For example, Daniel 9, Rashi himself says that the timetable given in Daniel 9, Daniel 2, shows that the Messianic kingdom had to be established during the time when Titus, who is the general of the Roman armies, who came and destroyed the second temple. In 66 to 73 AD, you had what's called the Jewish War when the Jews opposed the Roman occupation, and then the emperor sent an army headed by Titus to then bank Jerusalem, causing a great famine. Then they came in, destroyed the temple, burned it down. Rashi says that according to Daniel, it was during that time that the Messianic kingdom had to be established. So he admit, admits that Daniel's timetable says Messiah was to show up and establish the kingdom during that time. This, well, this where is, is the Messiah? I'm going to show you that. after the Bar Kokhba revolt? No, that's in the second century. You're talking about in the 130s. I'm talking about 66 to 73 AD. Rashi says the Messianic kingdom was supposed to be established at that time. So where's the Messiah? Because he's saying that's the timetable given by Daniel. Here, I'll show it to you. So where is he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Exactly, I because when the Jews rejected Jesus, not all of them. The first believers were Jews. They were not Gentiles. When they rejected Jesus, they didn't know what to do with the prophecy, so they had to reinterpret them. So what does he say? Here he's talking about Daniel 9, 24 to 27. 70 weeks decreed, he says, so that Israel should receive their retribution, the exile of Titus and subjugation. So he's saying, when Titus destroyed Jerusalem, this is when Israel will receive their retribution. He says that the anointed one, because in Daniel 9 talks about Mashiach Nagid, the anointed one, the ruler, would be cut off. He says it was Agrippa who was killed in around 40 AD, 10 years after Jesus. But why Agrippa? Why did he say it's him? Why didn't he say it's Jesus? And he says Titus and his armies would come and destroy the temple. But then he says, and his end will come about by inundation, and his end will be damnation and destruction, for he will inundate, inundate the power of his kingdom through the Messiah. So he's saying that during this time, you would have the Messianic era, the Messianic kingdom. And he's placing it in that period of time when Jesus walked, was killed, was buried, and his followers claim that he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. But then he doesn't admit it's Jesus. Let me get you the so, link. Down. So who is it if it's not Jesus? That's, that's what you got to tell them. But that's why so many Jews end up becoming followers of Jesus, because these are prophecies. So you got to tell Tobi, saying, hey, Tobia, who is the Messiah? What do you mean? Rashi says, according to Daniel 9 timetable, the Messianic kingdom had to have started at that era. An anointed one, a ruler, anointed Messianic figure would be cut off. Well, if you reject Jesus, Daniel's a false prophet because his prophecy says Messianic kingdom Messiah would start at that time. Well, Jesus came and went. The temple was destroyed. The Jews say, well, he's not the Messiah. So is Daniel a false prophet? Obviously not. So here, let me now show it to you. Here it is. To terminate to the transgression and to end sin. So that Israel should receive their complete retribution and exile of Titus and his subjugation in order that their transgression should terminate, their sin should end, and their iniquity should be expiated, 
in order to bring upon them eternal righteousness, to anoint upon them the Holy of Holies, the Ark, the Altars, the Holy Vessels, which they'll bring to them through the King Messiah. So this is all going to happen through the King Messiah when Titus comes to destroy the temple in Jerusalem, 70 AD. Well, 70 AD came and went. Where is the Messiah? So, like, what's, what's the objection? Like, what's the Jewish objection? I don't know why they rejected Jesus. Why did they continue to do so? Here. And his end will come about by inundation. And his end will be damnation and destruction. For he'll inundate the power of his kingdom through the Messiah. And it's all talking about Jerusalem and temple being destroyed in 70 AD. And it says this happens through the Messiah. What Messiah? You don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. So where is he? Now watch. And until destruction and extermination befall the dumb one, and the ruling of the abomination will endure until the day, the destruction and extermination decreed upon it will befall in the days of the King Messiah. Okay, well, 70 AD came and went, buddy. Where is the Messiah? I don't know what to tell you. All right. Um, so, and what about like all the tradition, like Jewish tradition about like the Messiah bringing like world peace and stuff? Is that not biblical yeah. or? Well, that's the thing. They don't tell you that the Hebrew Bible mentions a Messiah that will be killed and be resurrected, and then the Messiah who comes to resurrect him. Are you aware in the Babylonian Talmud they have two Messiahs? Yeah, I know about that tradition, yeah. Okay, so you're aware of Mashiach ben Yosef? Mashiach ben David. Yeah, Mashiach ben Yosef is killed, right? Mashiach ben Yosef is killed, right? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, two Messiahs, Mashiach ben Yosef, will be killed in battle, and Mashiach ben David who will resurrect him. Okay. That's an atonement. But wait, where did they get a Messiah, son of Joseph, who will be killed? Because I thought the Christians are lying when they say the Messiah must be killed. But in the Talmud, it says, Messiah, son of Joseph, will be killed according to Zechariah 12.10. Here, let me show you. 12.10. You ready? Now, even though I don't agree with his, the way he translates the Hebrew, but that's okay. Zechariah 12.10. If you read Hebrew, you're going to see it says, They shall look on me whom they pierce. Not they shall look on me about the ones who were slain. But here. Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour it upon the house of David, upon the heaven of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplications. They shall look to me because of those who have been thrust through. There is no plural. If you read the Hebrew, I don't know if you can, it says, Ille. Can. They shall look. Can you? Yeah. Can you show me the Hebrew? Right read it for me. Right there. <laughs> Eli, okay. Eli et asher dakru v'sabdu alav. Et asher what? Asher dakru v'sabdu alav. Okay, et asher dakru. Eli et asher dakru. Translate that. Asher dakru stabbed or pierced. Who? They. They stabbed and pierced. Who? Yeah. Oh no, Yosef Yerushalayim. Reread it again. They should look on me. Eli, yeah, whom Eli. they pierced. They oh. pierced who? Uh, Eli. Eli. That Ashir is the object marker, meaning the ones who pierced me. Read it carefully. Eli et Ashir. But Allah means on him. Yes. No, that's now the next line. And they will mourn for him. Oh, Allah. But it's still singular. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, still it's singular. singular. It's not them. Yeah, it's singular. But why did they translate it as plural? Here, look at the English. They shall look to me because of those whom who been thrust through. No, it's uh, singular. You got it. So that means you just admit here are the rabbis or the Jews that mistranslated the Hebrew. Why did they do that? They accuse us of mistranslating? Now here, who is it though? Who was the one that they killed? Here you go. Rashi, right here. As one mourns over an only son, as a man mourns over his only son, and our sages expounded this in tractate sukkah stolen with 15 as referring to the messiah son of joseph who was slain so rabbinic judaism admits the messiah will be killed but i thought jesus son of like his mashiach ben no, David, I mean, like, so. i'm not telling you the rabbis are right because where does it say this messiah is the son of joseph what i'm yeah, trying to show you is the rabbis admit there's a messiah who'll be killed uh -huh. here read in hebrew read it for us okay means killed, to be killed. Who's going to be killed? Uh, the Messiah. The but ben I Yosef. thought 
you, the rabbis say we Christians are lying that in the Hebrew Bible, Messiah is killed. Oh no, Chabad says that he will be killed. And Chabad is not quoting Chabad, it's quoting Rashi. This is Rashi's commentary. And Rashi said, this is what our sages taught. So my question to the Jews is, why do you accuse Christians of butchering the Old Testament, misquoting it, that there's nowhere in the Hebrew Bible that Messiah will be killed? Your rabbis say Messiah will be killed. Zechariah 12, 10, which is what we quote. John quotes this about Jesus being killed on the cross. <clears throat> not. Here, let me show you. You see the Zechariah 12, 10? You yes. just read that the rabbis admit this is about Mashiach, but they say Mashiach ben Yosef, right? Yeah, they do. Watch John saying this is about Messiah and Jesus fulfilled it. Watch. Same verse. Now we're going to go here. John 19, 30 to 37. Watch. So why do the rabbis then say the New Testament's making things up? How are we making it up? Your rabbis say, yeah, this passage is about Messiah. And John said, yep, yeah, and Jesus is a Messiah. And when he was pierced on the cross, he fulfilled it. The quote here. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Then the Jews, because it was a day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came, broke the legs of the first man and of the other was crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side, pierced Jesus' side with a spear. There's that word. And immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has borne witness. And his witness is true, saying, see, I'm an eyewitness. I was there. I'm writing as an eyewitness. And he knows that he's telling the truth, so that you also may believe. For these things came to pass in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And notice here. And an again, another scripture. They shall look on him whom they pierced. That's Zechariah 12.10. So yeah. why is it when the Christian quotes Zechariah 12.10 saying, see, when Jesus was killed on the cross and pierced, he fulfilled Zechariah 12.10. No, baloney. Messiah is not killed. But then that's what the rabbi said. They agreed with us. They agreed with John, the Jew. That Zechariah twelve ten is about Messiah. I see. Right here. But, but the, what the, if like Rashi is just wrong? Like, but he said the sages, not him. Uh, sages plural. They're all wrong. Then who got it right? Yeah. Okay, so this is what happens when we follow people like anti-Christian rabbis, Tovia Singer. They don't tell you these facts. They only try to show we're wrong, but then. We go and read their sources, but wait, 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 hold on, Tobia. You told me nowhere in the Old Testament, Hebrew scriptures, Tanakh, there's a Messiah will be killed. What about Zechariah 12, 10? The Talmud, your rabbis say, this is Messiah, son of Joseph, who's killed. So that means we're right. There is a Messiah will be killed. But you're denying it's Jesus. Then who is it? I don't know. Exactly. They're not going to tell you, buddy. All right, welcome back. Hope we've learned something from this debate. The Jewish man asked some questions, some more equations. He said, as a Jew, why did he need Christianity? Why did he need Christianity? And Sam began to make it clear to him that he asked Sam asked him a question that did you believe of the Old Testament? Everything that was written in the Old Testament. And the man answered yes. And Sam began to ask him, why is it that he did not believe the things written in the New Testament? And according to the Jewish man, he said he did not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. See, that is the main reason you need Christ. Then Sam asked him that, did he believe the prophet that was in the Old Testament? He said yes, that did he believe in Isaiah? He said yes, did he believe in Daniel? He said yes, then he asked him, then why is it that, that did, did Isaiah, did he preach about the coming of Jesus Christ as the Messiah? He said yes. Then he asked him a question that, did Daniel preach about the coming of the Messiah, he said yes, and he still asks him, did David, that is speaking in the book of Psalms, speaks about the coming of the Messiah, he said yes. 
Then when Jesus Christ came, start declaring the same scripture of the Old Testament. And why is that he did not believe? What? Why there is that the Jews did not? Some of the Jews did not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And it was told to him that that every followers of Jesus believe the Old and the New Testament, which is that is the difference between Christianity and the Jewish. So many Jews did not believe the New Testament, but only believe the Old Testament. Sam make it clear to him that the first believers, that is the first people who knows Christ, who knows about the Bible, was the Jews, not the not the Gentiles. The only reason that him now he need to become a Christian or he need to believe before he can become a Christian, he need to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And Psalms give him a point there that in the book of Psalms, when Psalms declared that he seated at the right hand of God. And he said, and he said to him, Lord, they called him Lord. That I the mention of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is now what? Lord, at that particular time, Jesus was called the Messiah. Jesus was called the Messiah. Thank you for watching. Please do it to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and comment if you have any questions to ask or anything you've learned so far.